very good morning to everyone. Uh, very special day. Quite the first biggest iPad ever. We launched a book in my capacity as publisher. So very happy to present with Darren today. Uh, welcome, Darren. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, I think uh, Darren strikes me as a person who is a writer, writer, uh, looking at his uh, works, right? You see works spanning from uh, micro fiction, that's the warrior, you see works uh, spanning poetry, peninsula, and today we're talking about Heartland, which was uh, launched uh, in the first instance was 1999, which itself is built on the framework of uh, a set of works for other. Talk about that. So today, right, uh, we would love for you to enter this uh, part uh, of part and get into the part of part and I, I call it this. Uh, but to start things off, right, maybe uh, we can have a look at certain photos that Darren has assembled for us. I would also like to thank those folks very much for this 2021 reissue of, of part and uh, this book actually takes four forms. The original one, uh, people took it over in 2002. Yes. And then there was an epic edition in uh, 2007 for Odepo. And this is really a work of love. Um, I'm very grateful to the team, the effort that was put in that additional content. And uh, it's very exciting. I mean, you guys can't see right uh, at home what I'm seeing, but in this room now, there's a team who brought the hotline out together with them. And so, uh, the editors, the uh, marketing, and the uh, promotion people. Yeah, and uh, uh, there's also even one person outside of the room. And so, we are very well supported. Uh, thanks for coming together with us. Yeah, so come, let's have a look at some photos. And uh, yeah, uh, Darren actually has like specific uh, kind of uh, References in the book, so you are going to see visuals at the moment, which will be a nice start. Yeah, so um, Kanye had asked me uh, about pictures that uh, in, uh, evoke the time that Martin was written. Um, I wrote it in my 20s, and uh, it, it was set in the 90s. Some things um, exist and some things don't anymore. Uh, this was actually the junk that was, uh, the Buddhist junk replica that was uh, referred to in the beginning of uh, the book. Um, and Wing, uh, who has just been conscripted, makes some observations uh, about it and it, and it begins this um, Process of linking history to uh, present. Um, so, this is the jump uh, as it was then. Yeah, so now it's when I walk past this junction, like, I can't really uh, imagine this, but you can see a bit of McDonald's sign on. The, the jet sprays um, that the that scene also refers to is still there. Then mm -hmm. yeah. uh, we are now looking at Fort Camp. Yeah, for Kenny Park, this was Drama Center, and um, Drama Center was the place where the characters um, performed a play. Um, it brought some of the characters together. Uh, for Kenny is also relevant because uh, it's talked about a few times, one of which is in the historical context. Um, it was fought over uh, during different parts of Singapore's history. At some point, it was the official residence of the Sanford Rebels. Um, and this was the drama center, which is uh, now no longer there, and instead is at the National Library. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interestingly, the disappearance of the buildings there will also be a feature of our chat. Uh, in the 1990s. Yeah, this, this is where Audrey and Wayne uh, meet up in chapter 2. Um, it was a meeting place. Uh, this fountain also doesn't exist anymore. And uh, Clementine and Soul and uh, 
old school aquarium is all lovely to see. Yeah. So the aquarium is um, referred to not uh, in Clementi but Marine Parade where Sharp lives um, and there is a scene where he is looking at uh, the fish um, in this uh, wonderful uh, fantasy world which uh, links to Sakila Otama's uh, origin story of being born in the sea and a bit of the historical chapters actually take place in the sea. Uh, some of you who are not uh, familiar with the story of Hapa and Mike, there's a lot of history also with this first to that fiction. Yeah. On the close? Well, so, this is um, where uh, Wing pays respects. Uh, together with his mother. Uh, this still exists, but uh, I think there are plans for it to be um, removed. Uh, and uh, the World Trade Center, we had one as well. Yeah, it's, the World Trade Center is now Harbour Front. I think the relevance of the amphitheater is that. Um, Wing attends a concert uh, by his friend George Burr. Uh, and that used to be quite. Uh, a, 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 there wasn't very much to do in the 90s, and I'm a big uh, fan of indie alternative music as well as local bands. So I used to go to the empty theater to watch live performances. And it would be outdoor. And it would be outdoor. I, I believe this empty theater is. Uh, also, the Victoria Hotel no longer there. Yeah, uh, so the yeah, Victoria Hotel is where Wing uh, meets Chloe's parents. Uh, Chloe comes from a posh background, and uh, Wing, who's working class, uh, was an alternative. He also arrived late, which made him a bit more stressed. Uh, used to be something which uh, defined that. Junction, um, it's gone. Holland Drive, oh, as I understand, uh, like Mary, your child was in Queenstown, very near Holland Drive. Yeah, I grew up in the Queenstown, Commonwealth uh, area, working class family, uh, but I often walk past this swimming pool at, uh, in, in, in Holland Drive, um, and there is a setting. Which references this pool. Um, I never thought it would uh, go away, but it's now been you know, demolished and there's going to be more uh, built over it. It's so, so funny that uh, I kind of like it was too smart because uh, 2014, I think they had a like, uh, last swim for people. It's kind of weird. Okay, um, and uh, interesting, you actually shared with us this process. Yeah, so. Um, there is a scene where Chloe gets upset with Wing because the heels get caught in these uh, elliptical uh, holes in car park states, which is meant actually for grass to uh, thrive. Uh, this is also where um, she had to visit the coffee shop toilet and was uh, being a postal that she is very disgusted by it. I think the toilets, if you remember in the 80s and 90s in coffee shops, were quite different from what they are right now. And it was actually the frivolous reason why um, they broke up. Um, and uh, I think I'm uh, very thankful for some personal kind of uh, awful reflections from there. Yeah. Uh, so is the East Coast Park Challenge used to be a whole thing. It was, uh, uh, I, I think now it's downtown east. Uh, there is a scene here where um, Wing and Ed is a, a friend's gathering uh, and, and you know, teens having barbecues at East Coast Park was a common occurrence. He also has a moment when he walks towards the sea uh, and, and has these thoughts that, that it was also the countdown uh, to 
the new year uh, using this gift. Uh, and uh, some very like uh, yeah, I was so there, there are um, references to uh, postmen and, and post boxes and, and the clicking sound, uh, the way that things were inserted, again very different uh, in the past. Now postmen open the back and uh, slotting is the uh, has changed. Time has uh, like in, like increased in pace. Like you can see people doing this like one box by one box. Yeah. And Marina Sun. So Marina Sun was uh, again uh, very different. Uh, there is a scene where Bing um, I think goes for the ten dollar buffet um, buffet the steamboat buffet that uh, I think we we, we remembered. Uh, when with Mei Ling and her friends, uh, also very iconic of the time. Yeah, uh, yeah this uh, the, the famous uh, dragon uh, playground. This occurs uh, in the book when Wing visits Joshua, the one who plays the pen, who has got the uh, kidney failure. And, and Wing looks down from uh, the corridor and his perspective of the dragon was uh, not so much the head that we often uh, think about but the, the skeletal coil uh, of the body which reminded uh, Wing of the stake that Joshua was in, he was emaciated and he was very ill. A few snapshots of other items that I still remember that the orange phone. <laughs> yeah, so public phones uh, appear in various uh, parts of the uh, story. Uh, so does a, so a danger. I, I think we'll come to that when we talk about. How, how this has um, impacted uh, the, the difference change has made the uh, Heartland a story which if it was written three years later uh, would have taken a different form because these things all got faced up at about the same time. Fortunately, they were still around and yeah, okay, I think uh, that was a lot of photos that I feel simulated a lot better. Yes, uh, we were part of the yeah. <laughs> We were both the access. Yeah, so I'm really pleased to be able to like uh, have this chat with you. And um, I think what you have gained so far, reader, right? If you have not read Harlan, is that the central character is a person called Wing. And uh, I think Harlan also drew a lot from uh, like Darren's imaginative landscape. And this landscape, I would venture to say, right, is one that is uh, founded in place. Which is why I thought, wow, beautiful, Darren, thanks so much for the photos that you showed. Yeah, I really would love to uh, like, uh, get you to talk more about place because place in any piece of writing can be very incidental. It's like a setting that happens to be there. But I find place in Hartman more than just that. It seems to inform and shape the identity of the characters. And I am very curious. You know, or to hear you talk more about place and uh, how physical space defines us. You know, how, how, how the architecture that we see around us, how that, how that works and when you're writing Hartman, you know, how, how, what is the significance of place in yourself? Well, um, one, some of it can be explained by the fact that uh, the um, Book originally took the form of a series of poems uh, called Parkland. Um, it, it was shortlisted for the 1995 SLP. Um, at that time, it was for unpublished fiction. Uh, and later, I think we'll go through the titles of some of the, the poems, but every single poem there is about a, a specific scene 
in, in the heartland. So this, uh, first and foremost, um, is the basis on which a plot was then uh, written in uh, to create the novel. Um, yeah, plate, plate is, is extremely important um, because the, the book is an, I, I, I see it as an existential novel and uh, it is about the protagonist trying to make sense of his place in space and time. Um, I, I, I think we are all invariably defined by um, physical places that we occupy, uh, architecture, where we live, where we stay, where we grew up, um, we, we tend to be uh, defined by that, but also chronolo chronological space, where um, we happen uh, to be born at which point in time, and, and there's to me a, a randomness to um, the, the, the place and the space that you uh, eventually occupy, but yet um, I think it's, it's a nature of human beings to seek meaning um, in randomness, and one of the ways that I think people do it is to attach to what is familiar. Um, I think it goes beyond nostalgia. It is actually, there is actually a comfort with familiarity and a comfort of, of, of return. Um, and so no, that you meant to place uh, the familiarity with place. With the place. And, and you can see that even, like, uh, even if, say, uh, you go to Bangkok, once a year, um, we very quickly develop, uh, although there's so much to see, develop rituals associated with a place that we will go to. People will say, oh, we always have these noodles on the second day at this particular place. Why? Is it, is it because it's the best? No, because, because um, place is a way in which uh, we uh, attach uh, meaning to uh, our lives. It's so interesting because just now, you know, when you were showing some photos, right, and invariably it kind of brings a smile to some of us when we see it. So this uh, very subconscious kind of attachment, I, I find it very interesting. I have not been to the like, swimming pool, but when I see I have a sense of familiarity. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure why you think of that. Yeah. No, I, I, I think that, that, that in particularly in Singapore, a uh, place has a uh, even more important uh, uh, quality over and above uh, what I'm saying about how we, we find uh, meaning by attaching special feelings uh, to where we live, where we grow up. And, and, and that is the um, invariable anonymity of public housing. Uh, and that's not limited to Singapore. I think uh, you'll see this in uh, the UK in council housing. Every um, country has uh, public housing. And, and there is uh, a, a certain um, uh, sameness uh, necessarily because you're trying to put as many uh, homes as possible into a, a place. Um, I, I mean, when, when we think about uh, what represents Singapore, most people would say home, MBS, uh, Changi Airport, uh, Botanical Gardens. Um, but actually, what occupies most of the of the of, uh, uh, the, the land uh, is our ubiquitous uh, HDB flats and. Uh, it, it, it's, it's really interesting because uh, there, I, I like Brutalist architecture and, and I think the origins of HDB flats uh, were Brutalist in nature. And, and I think we're now uh, coming to appreciate uh, how um, the, the different 
estates, uh, although looking similar, have now uh, developed characters of their own, uh, have developed personalities. I think what I really want to follow up on later is I want to look at the goals later if we can. And then, uh, because that's the origin of the heart and the novel, which is I think quite amazing. If I didn't actually know until recently because of our chats that Hartland arose from Oak Tree. Yeah, so we must look at that. So another thing you mentioned about uh, what uh, what references were in your mind right was the existential novel. Uh, I really like how you uh, describe the existential novel when we were talking last like uh, existential novels uh, ask the question are we all creative with life? So it's really about like how we understand daily experience, how we make sense of daily experience. So, so I wonder for you, um, how did life and living in Singapore uh, shape how you did Heartland as a novel? Yeah. So I, I think that my first novel um, was always going to be an existential uh, novel and it, it's, it's uh, partly to do with what the, my, my own um, philosophy, life and also the writers that uh, I was reading at that time um, like uh, Albert Bruno's The Stranger, uh, John Bossart, Bobo Singh um, the, 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 there's, there's often this question that's, that, that's asked, um, why is Wing this empty hero who achieves nothing and why is he so aimless? Um, yes, we hear that a lot. <laughs> of the of the 
myself in bed, I think it's an easier answer to arrive at than when you have a short uh, chronological interlam to, to draw from. Um, the physical interlam, uh, if you drive any in any direction in Singapore before you get to land in the sea. And, and there is a scene in, in Harlem where Wing is trying to escape and he's driving just uh, uh, in, to nowhere and he, he ends up in the sea. Uh, he goes to the beach, he washes his, his, his face. Uh, so I think these are the, the, the unique um, uh, circumstances uh, that make a search for identity for uh, individuals in Singapore. Uh, different, um, not that, not necessarily more challenging, but but different. I, I like the sense of place and how it informs the sense of self that I think from what you're saying. And uh, to me, when I read Harlem for the first time, uh, it spoke to a very uh, private and personal part of me because uh, it's about growing up. As well. Yeah, so so it's only just that they mentioned. Why are some people thinking, oh, why is this hero like uh, not doing much? And maybe we are just used to people doing a lot also because of uh, how times have also moved on. So I'm so glad that you bookmarked this particular period of Singapore history, you know, where before the internet and all these communications, things were really not moving that fast. Yeah, and, and I mean, before. Uh, you must remember that, that uh, HDV was a, a massive um, relocation project and that before that um, people were living in, in, in kampongs, the way people uh, related to each other uh, was different. Um, HDV then put uh, people into but what you mentioned, um, Mange, about uh, then the advent of technology, I, I think it actually accentuated um, the someone who's, who's seeking purpose. And, and, and let me explain that. Um, if someone like me in growing up in 90s already had difficulty finding purpose. I imagine that now someone growing up who has all the information that he or she wants uh, to, to, to access, um, suddenly choices are that, that accessible but that also makes things more difficult. That, simply put, when they were growing up, there were just less things to choose from. Uh, and that probably made choices a little bit easier. The technology, um, I, I think probably the, the singular most uh, interesting thing about, about Heartland being written when it was written is that it was at the cusp of um, the internet. So if you think about um, the characters, uh, the uh, only one a character, Sham, had a Dada modem uh, computer, and, and in those days, if you if you use the internet, then you can't use the phone. <laughs> yeah. um, only some kids uh, had mobile phones, but they were very rudimentary, and uh, I think it was more to show off. So there were some kids in Orchard who had it. It wasn't really a device that uh, uh, people had and people found useful. Uh, pages did exist, um, but the way it reached out to someone was primarily through the landline. And there are various scenes in the book where characters try to reach uh, one another and they fail because uh, the public phone that we saw just now, that orange one, well, a few things have to happen. 
You have to have 10 cents. You must remember the number of the person that you're calling. Um, you must hope that the person is in or someone picks up the phone. Um, and you have just three minutes to speak. Um, I remember that in those days, if I had made an arrangement to meet someone at the MRT station and they were late for an hour, I would call the home and someone in the family would say, he's left the house. And I had no more options but just to wait. So the characters uh, eventually drift apart. Um, there was always going to be a sense of enemy and only given that uh, it's an existential novel. Uh, but technology played a big part in the fragmentation of those relationships. Um, if this same set of friends were to be uh, acquainted today, uh, there are multiple forms of, of connection, perhaps too many. Um, uh, but I, I don't uh, want to discuss uh, how overcorrected this is bad, uh, but I want to say that there, that it was totally normal to be undercorrected, and you literally had to visit people, uh, phone them, uh, and when you're outside and using a public phone, the ability to lose touch and uh, for um, relationships to break down um, was very real. Uh, I actually want to now like uh, start to flash the Sligo because uh, questions need time to come in. So, um, if possible, right, let's just uh, have the Sligo uh, slide come on and as we delve into your poetry a bit, because uh, I'm really curious about where the architecture of the Hartland came from. So, I'm holding up this poem. So, was this the manuscript that you submitted for the SLP Singapore Bitcoin? It was wow, okay, amazing. So I'm going to read a few titles uh, because uh, I had the pleasure of looking at the poems before they started with the weekend. Oh, it's so new to me. I, I had to look, but I feel that it's very relevant. So if I read a few titles, right, maybe uh, Aaron, I feel that it's not that uh, time to like read a poem that you may want to read that is relevant to other, and we are not like spoiling the plot for anybody. No. So, so, uh, so I'm looking at the contents page. It says opening morning on Hillock. That's the first poem. Chapter one: Lian, the Chinese character for face. Rubbish collector Tai Pia, which is talking for like bears guy. Elders Filipino maids, grass cutter, old hat seller, postman, bladers, resident one, Louis Vuitton girl. Resident 2, truck driver. Resident 3, junior college person, I think of the female name. Then, resident 4, uncle. Mao, which is a Chinese for lover, uh, sorry, uh, cat. Iron, which is Chinese for lover. Crows, use. Yeah. Chapter 2, D, which is the Chinese character for earth. Three room flat corridor. All the images. The change Ovidia, which is coffee shop in Tokyo. Uh, hairdresser, neighborhood dialysis center, playground, cinema, 25th floor, wet market, feels like a uh, housing uh, essay. <laughs> okay, so page, the other page continues into benches, community center, POSB, library, vacant plot, provision shop, bracket. Indian. Provision shop, bracket Chinese. Oh, my shops come in different forms. Dead swimming pool, kindergarten. Chapter 3, Shi, uh, shi which is uh, things, or uh, yeah, business, sometimes it means 
Hungry Ghost Festival, August the 9th, Dipakali, and as a send off, Qingming, which is uh, the uh, uh, day when you go to sweep uh, the grave for Chinese, Election Day, Karaoke, Washing Day, Chapter 4, uh, Ming or Fate or Life in Chinese, 6 pm, Motorcycles, Rain, which is Chinese for Rain. Night, which is a lovely goal, very short by the way, and closing evening on King Oh my god, reading this, I have a sense that it's very distinctively Chinese as well. So I feel that that's probably also a reference to your roots as well. Yeah, so maybe you could uh, yeah, share a bit about this collection. So, um, I, I, I was really trying, in a way, um, I am going uh, to a certain extent, I was trying to find meaning, um, not successful at, it, at that time, but I had an intense emotional attachment to my landscape. Um, the, all, these, all these scenes are actually descriptions of those very things. Um, and they didn't have uh, necessarily uh, a higher purpose other than to um, take a micro look at the at, 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 at this uh, distinctive uh, uh, phenomenon in in a heartland. And string it together into something coherent, and, and hence it's uh, it start in the morning on the lock, uh, evening on the lock. But uh, for those of you who read Alan the novel, practically everything in here is represented as a um, as a setting uh, for for um, the uh, the characters. Uh, there's a postman.
was uh, unexplored territory. People weren't actively writing about HTTPSK, so using it as, as, as a setting. It's different from what I consider uh, now like the uh, inevitable jostle to be included in the Berlin canon by having a Berlin poem. Like everyone needs to have a Berlin poem. It, it, wasn't, it, it, it wasn't that, it just, it just happened that way. Particularly for, for Heartland, um, more than a setting, it ultimately became the purpose for Wing, um, who was searching for meaning, doesn't eventually find it, but it, he realizes that actually the, um, his attachment to where he lived and the familiarity um, is good enough for him. Um, I, I would like to really thank you for giving have one more one. Oh, would you like to pick one? Oh, okay, you ask me to pick this either the morning or the night. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, I just uh, I'll be talking a bit of which uh, um, I think in a way it has a companion piece in the in, in, in the novel. Actually, all of them are companion pieces because uh, they, they all, um, as I said, uh, uh, feature as uh, scenes in Harvard. So, morning on the log. Sitting here again, I am numb of a place I had but to succumb. For 22 years of, of, or half a lifetime, as it was said, my, day, my days have been mundane, ordinary, hackney. People I have known, talked to, seen in this, renovate to tolerate, and then leave briskly to newer estates, better districts. Looking at the heartland before me, I see tiny and varied rooms where people eat dinner, make love, watch TV, even as the other day rooms. I have only lived here. I have only lived this life. The smell of life. I know it so well. And, and, yeah, thank you so much. I really like that uh, when you just describe Things as they are, uh, there's a certain power to it. <laughs> you don't even have to embellish it, you know Of course, technique is quite a cheap word, but, but I think uh, it's a very down to earth representation of the thing to do. I can even imagine boxes with people who do this. And from the novel, when there are many instances where he feels lost and sad, and he goes to Parts of the PSA and 25th floor, which is uh, uh, also a poem in this uh, collection. The 25th floor is a place that he likes to go to. Um, and so, from the novel, Wayne decided to take a lift to the top floor of one of the point blocks in his estate. It was just across the road. The lift was slow and only went up to the 24th floor. He walked wearily up the remaining flight of stairs. Wayne stepped towards the parapet and breathed hard at the sight. Everything looked so small. The only time he remembered feeling like that was at Thomas Rose. The security was very tight and they had specially dressed up in formal clothes to sneak to the top floor for a magnificent view. But that was different. That was a view of the commercial skyline which he had seen many times before. This was the estate which he had practically lived in all his life, which he had seen up close, which he had known only as its distinct entities. Now he saw it all at once, the little town centre, the little hillock, the little community centre, the little bus interchange, the little people. It was nothing spectacular like a city state, just 
my name basis he was familiar with. Yet it was beautiful. In tiny identical rooms, he knew that people were eating, making love, watching TV, people who were their afternoon joyous and celebrating, sad and mourning, full of dreams, washed out with despair, silent as a painting, the estate spoke in its own voice. And then he then has further reflections um, about it. But, uh, I think that from there you can see uh, certain things that you would recognize from morning on, on, on the law. Uh, and, and, and that's how the I think we will definitely release the link to Laura, which is where your poems are available free. So, no need to pay. So, that's a very nice companion to the novel. I think it will make the reading experience that even more enjoyable because uh, I feel that place is really the style of the novel, if you ask me. And uh, I love what you do. So, we have a few chats with all this because uh, there's so many things to say and then we have inside what we want to talk about. And I like the word, the phrase you use, which is architecture of the heart and architecture of the externalities you know, or the exterior I can't remember what you say there but we do have a very few interesting questions right here and uh, I think we can move it to an A unless we want to wrap up the last part of the interview um, yeah. How much time do we have so much? Uh, this is yeah. about 8, eight minutes left yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. So, so we better uh, address this uh, up to the question we have from Anonymous is uh, if you were to rewrite Arthur today, what would be the main difference? Interesting. I think that at its core, it would still be uh, anti euro um, trying to find its, its, its purpose. As I say, technology is probably going to make it harder for him to find um, his, his purposes. The challenges will be different, but I still think that. Um, I would want Wing to ultimately find his purpose in the physical environment in, in, in which he, he lives. Um, I would also retain the references to uh, the historical chapters. Um, and just a quick note on that. Uh, there are hard cuts in the novel that, that go back to um, the, the history of Singapore starting from Sami Laotama. Uh, there's no attempt to uh, explain the linkages between the contemporary and historical, but that's intentional. That's how we learn from the as well. And, and actually, um, the reason we find we, 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 uh, that I did that is because history is a curious. People Civilizations come about, they make mistakes, they heal, and then they make the same mistakes again. People change, but places don't change as fast as people do. Um, the same places that, uh, that were fought over in Singapore are still here. Um, huge events, world events, the people have changed, the mistakes have been me. But the places, most of them are still there. So, so um, imagining uh, the past and the present when a place is, is still uh, in our midst, I think it's very interesting, including where we are right now. Um, the Arts House. The Arts House. The, yeah. Which also used to be the site of the first uh, law court. So, um, so maybe we can also take a look at uh, the next one, which was uploaded. You mentioned Harlan as an existential novel quite often. So how do you think writers or works in recent years have tackled this theme with this climate? I suppose climate will be this time of our history and the prevalent, the pre prevailing mood and values. Any, and also recommendations 
just got like essential models. Okay, guys, essential models can create a bit of like depression at some time. So mix it up with something like Arthur, like a suggestion. Of, um, of uh, intensity 
And so uh, there's, there's, there's less deeper connections. Um, and losing some of these connections doesn't mean as much as, as what it was before. So I, I, I like to think of fragmentation in the past as being a, like a slow cracks um, that eventually lead to uh, collapse. I think fragmentation now is something that takes place instantaneously. The, we, we form in relationships very quickly, we lose them also very quickly, um, and maybe the pain that is associated with it is also of a different type of uh, quality. The memories that are, the way we form memories in the past uh, is also different from how uh, memories are forged uh, today. I like the nuancing of fragmentation back now. And uh, I think it is a very realistic perception of how coldness is fragile, but at the same time, I do feel that after leaving Harvard, I value that memory, I value that connection. So, in spite of the difficulty, I think we, I hope, for this brighter future, which is off the pages, we do not know what's going on in the way now, 25 years on. Yeah, uh, this has been a wonderful like uh, day uh, hearing from you, Darren. Thank you so much. And to the readers, uh, you have asked very interesting questions uh, to my team in the last house and our guests. Thank you so much. Yeah. I think we can uh, call it a day then. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Here.